<gasps> Would you look at the time? It's time for another review in Classics Week. In this video right here, I'm going to be making the case for why Fugazi's debut full-length LP, Repeater, is just a really good freaking record. Fugazi, a Washington DC based quartet who was one of the landmark acts of underground rock in the 90s and early 2000s. And considering who was in the group, it's not really that difficult to believe that they went on to do great things really right from the start with this album right here. First off, you have Ian MacKay in the group, guitarist, lyricist, singer, songwriter, most well known for fronting the hardcore punk band Minor Threat. And after they had disbanded, he was already working on actually taking the sounds of hardcore punk music down a darker, more introspective, more emotional path with bands like Embrace, a very short-lived band who had one album that is a bit of a forgotten stepping stone on the way to Fugazi. But a group that a lot of punk fans do remember in this pre-Fugazi era is the band led by co-singer-songwriter in Fugazi, Guy Pichotto writes of Spring. A band that a lot of people credit as sort of being forefathers of emo, emotional hardcore. And the band's drummer Brendan Canty actually transitioned over into Fugazi. He played in other groups as well that appeared on Discord Records, the record label that Ian MacKay has been spearheading for years up until the point where Fugazi formed. And then there is Joe Lally, who is actually a bit of a record label head himself. The bass player of the band closes up the lineup and whose bass lines actually are really pivotal to the groove bass sound that Fugazi brought to the table. There are a lot of things that I like about these bands and projects that were formed leading up to the formation of Fugazi, but here in this band, I feel, is where all of it really clicked. They were able to successfully take the ferocity, the aggression of hardcore punk, but apply it to more dynamic song structures, flashier guitar playing, more adventurous song structures as well. And there were already a number of groups in the 80s that were experimenting with the sounds of punk rock and hardcore punk and, and weirding them up a little bit, like the Minutemen, who were incredibly eccentric, or Big Black or Flipper, who brought a lot of noise into the fold. And there were bands like Husker Du as well, who, while they were very influenced by hardcore punk, they appreciated pop music and, and lots of melody as well. That's why a lot of these groups taking hardcore punk music and fusing it with other genres are usually labeled post-hardcore. But Fugazi's never really been one for labels anyway, so... Fugazi came after all of these bands, but what makes them stick out to me is that they had a little bit of the best of all of these worlds. Intensely catchy songs with big shout-along choruses and burning, unforgettable guitar leads. Great riffs that just had a lot of punch to them, but they weren't really heavy. In fact, they were very lean and had a lot of mid-range to them, but, but just a very sharp tone. And occasionally, the way that these guitars were layered was very noisy, chaotic, abrasive. And even though I wouldn't call the melodies on this or any of Fugazi's records sweet, for sure that did play a very pivotal role in the band's music. And the band was also bringing these bass and drum grooves that were more complex than anything that these guys had worked with before in the punk bands they had been in previously. And these bass lines and drum beats, especially when the guitars are stripped back and you're simply listening to the bass and drums, what they're playing, the vibe, the tone, sounds like sort of a precursor to a lot of the alternative rock and grunge that would hit the mainstream just a few years later. Later in their discography, the band would experiment more with sound play and song structure and weirder guitar sounds and instrumentation, like on LPs such as Red Medicine, which was my favorite Fugazi album for a while. But Repeater is just such a fantastic start for the band and anybody who's really looking to get into their music because of the busy rock instrumentation and the interplay, the grooves, the stellar songwriting, as well as the raw sound of the production, too. Now this thing has 11 tracks, it's about 35 minutes, a little on the short side, but it does not lessen the album's impact at all. It starts off with this really slow drum and bass groove, lots of space in this groove, and on top of it the guitars just pig pile and start blazing, blaring the tone of the guitars on this track are just like indescribable. It's so fiery. It is searing. Pichotto's lyrics on this track are a little difficult to decipher, but the more I listen to them, the more I feel like this track is sort of about choosing ignorance in the face of a problem that someone might need to fix. Passing the problems on, 
shelving the problems, using turning over and sleeping instead as, as a metaphor. And I just love how snugly every piece of instrumentation fits into this track and other tracks on here too. The bass has a perfect space, the drums have a perfect space, the guitars have perfect space sort of chiseled out for them, as well as Picciotto's lyrics as well, when he just delivers his words on this track. He just sounds so incredibly gripping and passionate, and he just shows so much conviction on this song. That was a lot of the slower tracks on this thing are written by him as well, and some of them have this pretty nice ballad like quality to them, like Blueprint. I will admit that the lyrics on this track are a little puzzling to me. They're really some of the most esoteric I've heard him sing in a track, but I do hear a lot of themes of consumerism and, and humdrum choices and sort of in-the-box thinking. What ultimately grabs me on this track are just the slow, anthemic guitar chords and the several refrains that this song has too that just immediately stick in my head. This is easily one of the band's most immediate songs. If you've never heard them before, this would be a great track to start with. However, my favorite slow burner on this entire LP is, is the closing track, Shut the Door, a Mackay track. And the groove on this track is written by a guitar lead that is difficult to describe other than just being uniquely Fugazi-esque with just how smoothly and mechanically it sort of slinks up and down in pitch. And I suspect that the lyrics on this track are about an overdose or the paradox of using drugs to alter your mind but also hurt your body to attain some kind of freedom. But to go back to the lyrics, you really can read into what is being said on every track and sort of grasp onto a deeper meaning. The song Civ Fisted Find I think is also about some kind of drug addiction. And the other themes on this LP revolve around violence and death and other various things that the band just sort of seems to be completely fed up with. In a way, even though it doesn't really seem that way on the surface, it is a pretty morbid LP. It's fascinated with all of the issues that, that ail society, but it's also very concerned about all of them too. It's sort of focused on connecting with the listener on this level and maybe warning the listener in a way, but doesn't come off too preachy or annoying. Less difficult to pull apart lyrically is the song Greed, which <laughs> over some blaring guitars we pretty much only hear the lyrics, you wanted everything, you needed everything. That's pretty blunt, and it does this for about 1 minute and 48 seconds. That's a bit of a detour on this LP, as is the song Brendan 1, which is just an instrumental track, but with its really righteous anthemic guitars and catchy bass and drum groove, the song is so energetic that the fact that it has no vocals, no lyrics, doesn't even really become a concern. Plus, this track also shows just how much Fugazi's sound is based off of jamming as opposed to just simple one songwriter by himself songwriting and then sort of bringing the song to the rest of the band. And this jam and riff heavy vibe is really the meat of a lot of tracks on this album. And that not only makes a lot of these songs pretty memorable because they feature killer riffs, but it makes these tracks incredibly visceral. And of course the punk acts that a lot of these guys played in prior to Fugazi were visceral as well, but I like that these guys are able to slow things down a bit add more dynamics, add more detail, add more space, but have this be just as visceral and just as exciting an experience. There's the song Repeater, the title track on this thing, which is one of my favorite songs here because of its strangely claustrophobic mix and just how every sound, the grainy distorted vocals, the noisy brittle guitars, and the rattling bass and drum grooves are just all conflicting with one another chaotically. There's the track Merchandise, which features one of the most explosive choruses on this entire LP. We owe you nothing! Nothing! Which is a bit of a shot of consumerism, sort of telling the listener that they're not necessarily what they own or what they purchase, what they buy into, even though people are so much more than that. What's funny is that often that's sort of how people define themselves. There's the track Two Beats Off, which has one of my favorite riffs on here, and during the very dismal choruses, there's sort of this jangly set of guitar chords that remind me a lot of something specifically that Tom Morello did on Rage Against the Machine's third LP. And then there's the track Styrofoam, which has this strangely sputtering guitar riff that I dig a lot. Some really propulsive drums behind this riff as well. I mean, track for track for track, this is just a solid ass LP. With this album, Fugazi is just really kicking ass right out of the gate with focus song topics and explosive energy, but yet they're also composed and just up here enough, just cerebral enough to pull together instrumentation that sounds really composed and detailed. This is definitely a record and definitely a band for people who love their punk music to have some inner workings, 
some body. And for just over a decade, that's pretty much what made Fugazi such a significant act in underground rock music. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much why this is one of my favorite bands ever. Ugh, I have so much of their albums. Transition. If you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Is this one of your favorite rock bands ever? Is this one of your favorite rock albums ever? If not, why? Why? And you know, and if it's not, that's cool. That's cool. Anthony Fantano, repeater, forever.